five again. Okay, we're back at it. I rolled over my dress, okay. Hello, 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 what's going on friends? Let me get my drink and then I'll tap to make sure that you guys know I'm all over the place. Let me get my tea. Let's see, hi. Hi, 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 what is going on friends? Welcome back. Yesterday we were having a lot of great questions about HSV, about getting tested, about HSV1, HSV2. Um, how often should you get tested? What if you're, you, you don't have it, but your partner has it? A lot of questions like that. So feel free, this is your opportunity to ask your questions. Uh, and I am here to answer them. If you know someone that has herpes, this is a great opportunity to share this live with them or definitely share my information with them. I've been talking about herpes publicly since 2017, and it's something that, um, you know, you never set out saying like, oh, I'm gonna talk about being diagnosed with herpes. It's an extremely private thing. But I realized that by doing it, I was helping so many individuals throughout the world who are in a very similar situation to myself. All of a sudden you get a diagnosis and you go, OMG, what am I gonna do with my life? How is this gonna affect my life? Will I ever be loved again? Will I ever go out again and date? Will I have to date someone that has herpes? Um, what if I'm rejected? What if, can I be a mom? Can I be a dad? Um, what are some things I need to know about? What if you already are a mom and a dad? What do you need to know about? What do you need to be worried about in transmission? So all of those questions, I realize that's like totally in my armpit. All of those questions um, are things that we all have when we're first diagnosed, of course, right? So again, feel free to ask your questions and um, I will answer them in the order that they come. And let's see. So yesterday I had a lot of questions about when to get when to get tested. How often should you get tested? So for example, this one in particular woman was like, I'm dating someone that has herpes. How often should I get tested? So here's the thing is your body has to create the antibodies in order to get a positive test. So let's say you come in contact with herpes um, last weekend. Let's say whether it was a one night stand or whether it was a long-term partner or whatever, you come in contact with the virus last weekend. You go in today to get tested. If you don't, your body wouldn't have had the opportunity to make the antibodies. So you're gonna test negative. So obviously talk to your doctor about this, but in my opinion, I would get tested if you're worried about it, maybe every quarter, um, it, maybe every, oops, maybe every six months. But um, my husband does not have herpes and he gets tested every six months only because I ask him to get tested because I want him to get tested because I want to know what his results are so I can share with you guys. Um, but other than that, he just doesn't care. He doesn't really want to know. He doesn't care. He doesn't, it doesn't impact him at all at this point in our marriage. John is saying, I, Johnny is saying I have HSV too. It's hard for people to accept and understand it more. All right. So I hear that a lot. Um, but I, then I also hear the flip side of like, hey, it's not even a big deal. No big deal in, in disclosing. So I would, Johnny, I would, so here's why rejection happens. And then here's why herpes is a big deal. So number one, rejection happens because the person is not mature enough to have the conversation. It's silly. It's, um, it's just, uh, they're, they're, they're young, emotionally young. Don't, they don't have to be like physically young but like they could be like irresponsible or just, that's not the word I'm looking for. What am I looking for? Immature, all right? You can be 55 and be immature. You can be 15 and be immature. Um, it's just when the person is like silly about intimacy, silly about sexual health, silly about the whole thing. The second reason why rejection happens is the person has a deep-rooted belief that's never gonna change. So I like to use the example of religion. If you have a, a Catholic priest and you have a Jewish rabbi, they're able to come together and have a conversation about God. They're able to come together and want to help people and, and work together. But when it comes down to the fundamental belief system of a Catholic priest and a Jewish rabbi, the rabbi is never going to be, believe what the Catholic priest believes, and the, the Catholic priest is never going to believe what the rabbi believes. So in that case with herpes or, or STIs or things like that, is you may have someone that has such a deep, deep, deep-rooted belief 
that's never going to change. And he or she is never going to get over it. He may or she may be able to have a conversation with you, sympathize with you, go to the doctor with you, be there for you, you know, be there for you when you're diagnosed and crying, but deep, deep, deep down, that person's never going to be able to like cross over, if that makes sense. Um, and third, the reason why rejection happens is the person's not into you. And this is the one that hurts the most because we think it's because we have herpes, but really it has nothing to do with herpes. The person is just not into you. You could look at me. I'm a woman who's a brunette. I'm never going to be a blonde. It's just not who I am. And if you're into blondes, I'm never going to be a blonde, right? So it could be something that superficial. When we have herpes and we disclose we have herpes up front, we're T-balling it. We're setting it up for an opportunity for an immediate rejection. So if that person doesn't know you, if that person is immature around it, or if that person has a deep-rooted belief, he or she's going to reject you immediately. So that's why it may seem very difficult to date or disclose or have these conversations. What's important for you to remember is, again, if this person was never going to be there for you to begin with, like this person was never going to be there for you. Um, back to your other question, uh, or why is it so hard for people to understand or get around? A lot of it has to do with there's not a lot of education around it. And again, like you hear herpes, you hear STD, you're like, ew, gross. Like, ew, that person was irresponsible. Ew, that person was promiscuous. Ew, that person, whatever. Um, and so we all have our own belief systems around it. I did as well prior to being diagnosed. I had an idea of the person that had herpes and I was never going to date that person. So therefore, I was never going to have it. So, um, so, so it's an opportunity for us just to educate the person and make it more like a public service announcement for the, per for the people to, um, understand a little bit more about herpes. That was a really long answer for you, Johnny. I hope that helps. Um, is it possible to be undetectable? Yeah, you, well, you can be asymptomatic, but as far as undetectable, like if you have a blood test with the IgG antibodies, if it comes back positive, you're positive. If it comes back negative, you're negative. Um, the antibodies can take a while to show up. So there could be like a an incubation period that you're waiting on. But if you're positive, you're positive. It doesn't mean you're going to have outbreaks. Um, can you have a natural birth or do you have to have a C-section? Well, that is very... It's a good, you're on brand right now because I am going to have a baby soon. Um, my son was a vaginal birth and I plan on this baby being a vaginal birth. So yes, you can absolutely have a vaginal birth. It does not have to be a C-section. What I would personally recommend is you getting on the same page as your doctor and the dad. So you, your, you and your partner need to be on the same page and you and your doctor need to be on the same page. The three of you need to decide what is best specifically for you and what is going to be best for you and the baby. So the concern is during pregnancy, not at all during pregnancy with outbreaks, like it's not a concern. The concern is during delivery. So, or post, you know, when the baby's out because the baby's going to be exposed to everything just like we are, right? Um, so the concern is during delivery and you want to make sure that your doctor is comfortable with, a with having a vaginal delivery. What I did for my son is I took that antiviral a month before delivery and um, didn't have any outbreaks and was able to deliver vaginally. So I felt comfortable with the risks, my husband felt comfortable with the risks, and my doctor felt comfortable with the risks. According to my doctor, again, I am not a doctor, you need to talk to your doctor, but according to my doctor, if you don't have an outbreak, you're taking the antiviral, you have a less than 1% chance of transmitting herpes to your child. Do I take antivirals daily? I do not. Um, I used to take them in my 20s when I was dating. I do not take them. I am take, taking them currently right now because I'm going to have a baby, but I do not want to take them. I don't really want to be taking them right now at all. I don't like taking them. I don't like the way it makes me feel. I personally feel that our bodies are able to fight off the virus. I believe that we have an immune system that's meant to do what it's supposed to do and it can do it. Um, so no, I do not take the antivirals. I get cuts after my period. I'm scared it might be that, 
but it only shows up after my period. So the only way for you to know if that is herpes is for you to go get those cuts tested. Um, for my outbreaks around, I get them around my anal opening and it is a little paper cut. So that's how I know I have an outbreak. It's a little paper cut. It's nice to see what, see someone else in the same situation and knowledgeable. Thanks for speaking on it. You're welcome. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not like a club we wanted to sign up for, obviously. It's not like, yeah, let me join. But of course, there's other people like you, like me in the same situation. I've had it since I was in my late 20s. I've lived with it. I've dated with it. I've married with it. I've been pregnant with it. I've given birth with it. Um, my husband and son do not have it. So it's definitely something I've lived with. Um, hi, my partner and I want a baby. Does herpes affect pregnancy or birth? I just talked on that. Um, no, it has nothing to do with pregnancy. Like in utero, the baby's completely safe in utero. There's no issues with the virus impacting the baby in utero. The only concern would be during delivery and that's something that you and your doctor and, and your husband or partner would wanna be, um, would talk about. Can you recommend a pregnancy safe shampoo and conditioner? I cannot. I am still working on finding a natural shampoo and conditioner. I, I don't, I don't have, I, I've just been using, what is it? I don't know what it is. I get it off Instagram. I don't know what I use, but I only wash my hair once a week. So I don't know. That's it. This is like three days dirty. I don't know. I only wash my hair once a week. Um, honestly, I'd rather be with someone who has a similar thing. I think it would make life easier. That's just your opinion. Yeah, um, there's a lot of people that would rather ha date someone or be married to someone that has herpes, and that's something that you can absolutely, that's important to you, that's important to you. There's websites you can look at, but I just want to say you don't have to be, just because you have herpes doesn't mean you have to be with someone that has herpes. My husband doesn't have it. Am I prego? I am. I am nine months. I'm going to have this baby the first week of November, so I am pregnant. <laughs> Um, I've dated people since being diagnosed in 17, um, one with and two without. That's awesome. You haven't seen you in forever. You see things have changed. Exactly. You can see why you haven't seen me in forever. Um, but why put yourself in an unsafe situation when, and then have to explain how you got it? What do you mean an unsafe situation? Like put yourself in an unsafe situation with disclosing like to someone, a stranger or like getting herpes or what? A lot of people are not in unsafe situations when they get herpes. Most of the time their partner doesn't know that they have herpes. Their partner doesn't know that he or she has herpes. Um, most of us are not asking for, um, most of, most of us are not asking for test results and things like that. I am pregnant, thank you. How long you take the antivirals before birth? Um, you take them for about a month before you deliver, five weeks. This is my second baby. Watching your videos has helped me so much. Oh, you're welcome, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that the videos have helped. Um, what vitamins do I take instead of the antiviral? Well, number one, I make sure that I eat healthy. I eat a really clean diet. I exercise, I sleep, I take care of myself, things like that. Um, then I am a huge fan of lysine. It's an essential amino acid. It's a protein that helps block the replication of the herpes virus. This is what I take daily. Not currently right now, but I will after baby. Um, I take this daily and it has been really helpful. It helps with the prodrome. It, it, def it definitely helps. It helps um, also with the recovery. If you do get an outbreak, it helps speed up the recovery internally. I'm also a big fan of monolaurin, which is lauric acid. It's actually found in human breast milk and also coconuts. So what it does is it helps dissolve the outer shell, the outer layer of an enveloped virus. And when we do that, our immune system can't penetrate through the outer external shell of the virus. So 
this helps dissolve that external shell so that our immune system can go in and do what it needs to do and fight the fight the either the the virus or if you have a bacterial infection. So if you have another infection going on in your body, like let's say you get a UTI, which would be bacterial based, your body's gonna focus on the UTI, on the bacteria and things like that, and not focus on the HSV. So that gives the herpes virus like, ooh, you're focused on something else, I can have an outbreak. So that's what I would take. Um, can my partner take the same exact pills Yes, you you're, you don't have to have, like these are supplements. Yeah, your partner could take the same pills. Um, when you, any, so as far as partners, to help prevent transmission to your partners, both you and your partner, the more that you have strengthened your immune systems, the stronger your partner's immune system is, the less likely your partner's gonna get herpes, vice versa for you. The stronger your immune system is, less likely you're gonna have outbreaks, less likely you're gonna shed, the less likely of you transmitting herpes. So. That's really key, the key, the stronger the immune system. When I came off the antivirals after a few years, were there effects? Yeah, I had a lot of really big outbreaks after I got off the antiviral. Um, it took me a long time to like work through that, but I just got to a point in my life where I was like, I don't wanna be taking a drug every day. I, I'm not into big pharma. I'm not into drugs. I'm not into taking things. Um, I haven't taken an aspirin or Tylenol in like five years. I do not take anything. So I'm one of those people like, oh, if I have a headache, there's a reason. I'm not gonna go take an Advil. So if I'm getting an outbreak, there's a reason. So I try to go to the reason and the cause and I try to fix it naturally opposed to, oh, let me just pop a pill. Did you confront the person that gave you herpes? Yeah, I did. He definitely knows. Um, he, yeah, I went to his house and told him and he kicked me out. Um, so yeah, he knows, he definitely knows. What are the coconut pills? They are the coconut pills, I like that. It's called clean lysine. This is where you, it's uh, clean lysine. I do have an 11% discount on it, so if you wanna check it out, you can look at that. I swear without your account, I would have never been okay. It's been three years. Oh my gosh, I'm glad that you're okay. Three years, congratulations. Um, yes, I am pregnant. <laughs> I am very pregnant. I'm nine months pregnant. How long do my lesions normally last? Now they usually, like 24, 48 hours, not long. They're not a big deal. Um, usually I feel them coming on. I know what's causing them. I try to kind of nip it. Usually what's, when it's coming on, it's my nervous system. I'm usually stressed out. I need to calm my nervous system. So, okay, friends, I'm going to go. I will see you again soon. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for joining me on the live. Big hearts. Thank you for all the hearts. Um, and how old am I? I am 41. Do you think Birth will affect anything down there. Um, it didn't with my son, so we'll see what happens. All right, friends, I will see you soon. Bye.